in terms of, actually, in terms, I'm interested in terms of you putting your music together, because something like, you know, say, The Time, open brackets, dirty bit, close brackets, were you watching Dirty Dancing and kind of went, oh, yeah, I like this song, I might do something with it? We were in Ibiza, oh. and um, we were getting ready for a DJ gig, and uh, I'm like, what? I got to drop something for the night. And so me and my, my homeboys, uh, Ammo and Apple, <laughs> homeboys, meaning people that are close to me, that where I feel like chums, chums, like a chum. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so me and a few of my chums, <laughs> we were chumming it up. <laughs> and, uh, I asked him, "What are we going to play tonight?" It's unexpected, and he said, "We should mix something from yesterday, old school." <laughs> Old school. Right. Yeah. Not my elementary. <laughs> no. Old school meaning, you know, back in yeah. the day. Back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, let's pick something from back in the day and, and you know, flip it up, intertwine it with, <laughs> with today's stuff. I mean, music. <laughs> so, I say, <laughs> why don't we use Dirty Dancing? And then he replies, <laughs> That's crazy. We can't use Dirty Dancing. I was like, but that's the whole point. You don't say I, about, I was like, that's the whole point. But I'm not, I, I, you don't say that. I'm not you say, say that's that. the whole point. If I you don't a... need like, right? <laughs> By the right, way, well, everybody, right. please stop using the word like. <laughs> I, I don't like it. She feels very sorry about this. She does. But how about if I said I like you? That's different. You're using it as a verb. I would say, usually, I'll be like... I'll be like... You see, it's a habit. It's no, no, it's quicker. It's like... It's not like. It is. It is. Yo, what are we going to do today? I don't know what we're going to do. So he was like... And I was like... And so then we put it on the table, and it was like, bam! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get what you're saying. It's like... It's not like. It's not like. And while we're at it, it's... <laughs> For the greatest of respect, it's I've got a feeling. So. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, gang, I don't want to gang. I don't want to gang up. <laughs> so, when you're a DJ, when you're, when you're a DJ, can you kind of can you mix any song into another song? Sometimes. <laughs> so if you do it like, not sorry. Like... <laughs> it's you... like sitting an exam. <laughs> If you were to <laughs> mix Michael Jackson's uh, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you like that one? I'm sure I will. <laughs> so if you were to mix Don't Stop Till You Get Enough into, um, which one do you know? And I'll mix it. Smoke Gets In Your Eyes. <laughs> Cole Porter. So if you were to do don't stop till you get enough to smoke gets in your eyes. I've never heard it. Smoke gets in your eyes. You sing That's it. That's it. Go, bust it. I've, I've just busted it. <laughs> so it's like, so Michael Jackson's beat would go. Go. Smoke gets in your eyes. You know what I mean? You got that. And yet, and yet my, my gut instinct was to do some hardcore rapping, Graham. Yeah, yeah but that's when you were supposed to say, smoke gets into my eyes when I'm puffing on a doobie. <laughs> I used to be into the, uh, when I was a kid, I used to be into the Booyah tribe. Yeah. Do you know them? Those big Samoans? Yeah. You know those guys? You must know them. Hit the gas, put on a ski mask, right where we pass, what you think, we'd smoke that ass. <laughs> I think let, me, let me do the second verse. This ain't a game, straight up reality, driven by the streets, born by insanity, drive by. Yes, it's the season when the gangster kills for no reason. When an MC sitting on a front porch, stick him like a pitchfork, this is not New York. Good. Well done. Now, 
<laughs> no, no, no. That was the, the booyah tribe. Those are the words of, the, of a song. A booyah of, tribe. A booyah. You know, I'm missing out here. <laughs> now, I thought she was going to kick it in a rap right there. <laughs> Listen out here, you better feel. Don't say like in here. <laughs> now, Karen Bogley is very exciting. You are on a world tour. It's a proper world tour. I mean, you've been in Australia already. And New Zealand. Oh, you've done New Zealand already. Dear New Zealand, New Zealand. yes. Uh, but you get here on 23rd of June, it's tomorrow, Saturday. Is that tomorrow? Yes, it is. It is. Yes. Um, and, uh, and then you go to Canada and the States? Yes. Yes, very good. Yes. So and all are... around England as well. Oh, oh yeah. Don't, oh, yes. All around. Taunton. We're going to Taunton. <laughs> what part of the States are you going to? I'm going to uh, California. That's where I'm from. Yes, I know that, darling. Um, <laughs> and Chicago. Nice, nice. Yes. Nice. And, and Yale. And 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 Massa all over Massachusetts. When you say Yale, you have to say Yale. Yale. <laughs> <laughs> because, because you're doing the show is, is Dickens Women, and we'll talk about it in a bit. But but in order to get sort of match fit, you've been you, you've become a vegetarian. Yes. Well, I knew that I'm 71, and I and I'm overweight and not particularly fit, and I thought I must get fit to do this to do this tour. So I went to India to an Ayurvedic clinic and I had oil enemas every day for six weeks. Oh my god. <laughs> Does a mechanic do that? I mean what not really. No, no. is it hot oil, cold oil? I, I think it's warm. I think but well, it's warm afterwards anyway. <laughs> It really was amazing, and that's where I became a vegetarian. Uh, I eat fish, but not um, poultry or red meat. Yeah, yeah. And it really got me fit. It, it got me going, and I was able to do the tour so far without missing a show or feeling poorly or anything. Yeah. Well, you look amazing. You look very fit and healthy. Do you think so? You really do. Oh, bless you. Yes. Because you. Thank you. Thank you. you yeah. have, and you do swimming. I swim. I swim every day. I haven't met you in the pool yet. Um, but I imagine that you're a bit faster than I am in the pool. Well, if I am there, I'm probably raising money for charity. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't, you don't just swim. Um, yoga. You do yoga, don't you? Well, that's been my uh, attempt to get fit recently, yeah. Really? I've been doing yoga on my own in my house. <laughs> Humiliated. It's very, it's very, very good. It's Do you know what? I bought, a, I bought a DVD, which is brilliant. I don't want a, the lady who did this DVD to think I'm being negative about it. It's, it's great. And I've done it for weeks. And I just presumed um, that the lady was some sort of yoga master of uh, her whole life and she'd trained in the Far East or something. And a mate came around and I showed it him and said, I've been doing this yoga DVD. It's absolutely brilliant. And he went, mate, she's on Emmerdale file. <laughs> She's really good. <laughs> but she's from Emmerdale. She's a lesbian character from Emmerdale Farm. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I know in America they don't say that much on television, but I like to say it, because I think it gives people courage. Yes. Oh, yeah, I think they it's say I've never met a lesbian before. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because they couldn't reach you, I think. <laughs> oh, they could reach me. <laughs> <Wrong avail. laughs> Miriam, uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Dickens women. Uh, because you, you put you <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said I never met a lesbian. And then you said let's talk about Dickens women. <laughs> was a lesbian. A One of the women lesbian. in my show is a lesbian. Really? Yes. Oh, yes. And, uh, but From Little Dorrit, Miss and Wade. At, and at the time, would people have known that Miss Wade was a lesbian? Of course not. Oh, I see. Oh, absolutely not. No. Oh, okay. It's only now we know. Now we can tell, because he's such a wonderful writer. Because you put it together, it's you and... Sonia Fraser. Sonia Fraser. Yes. Um, because people, I suppose, don't associate Charles Dickens with... Lesbians. Well, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Tend to be kind of grotesque or kind of ingenues. 
Yes, well, he didn't get on very well with women because he was damaged by women. He didn't, his mother was, he thought, neglecting him. His wife, he fell out of love with. He had a mistress. I tell all these shocking stories in my show. Oh, see, so it's not just the characters. You also tell the story. I tell the story of the man because he's so extraordinary and wonderful and strange and so different from what people think he is, you see. And that's what I'm trying to get across. He was the greatest writer of English prose. In his way, he was king rapper of his day. Yes. If he was a rapper, his name would be Chuck Dick. Because <laughs> Charles is Chuck. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. just shorten it up. Yeah. Why don't you come and see my show? You should. I, I think you might should, enjoy it. In L.A., we should kick it. Yeah, we should kick it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be very nice. Now, this is... I don't want to put you on the spot, but is there a, a, a little bit of one of the women you could do for us? Is, is that too awful no, to No, I'd love you? to do oh, so. Oh, fine, I'd okay. I'd love to. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Yeah, how, what fun. Well, uh, one of the characters that he invented was this midwife. And in the days, in Victorian days, midwives... Are there any midwives here? Clearly. Well, his midwife was a drunk. And... Um, <laughs> Funnily enough, <laughs> nothing has changed. <laughs> but they also laid out corpses. They, they had two jobs. Midwives, they did both. Oh. And Mrs Gamp, who's the one that I play, was a, a drunken midwife and... She liked to talk about herself, but she pretended that it was Mrs. Harris, her friend, who was talking about it. And she said, When Gamp was summoned to his long home, and I seen him lying in the hospital with a penny piece on each eye and his wooden leg under his left arm, <laughs> I thought I should have fainted away, but I bore a heart. <laughs> if it wasn't for the nerve, a little sip of liquor gives me. I could never go through with what I sometimes has to do. As I said to my friend, Mrs. Harris, at the very last case, as ever I acted in, which it was but a young person, Mrs. Harris, I said, leave the bottle on the chimney piece. And don't ask me to take none, but let me put my lips to it when I'm so disposed. And I will do everything I've been engaged to do according to the best of my ability. Thank you very much. <laughs> You are a marvel, Mary Marcus. A marvel. Uh, now, is it fair to say, Miriam, that you are not physically shy? Yes, it is fair to yes, say. Yes, I thought that. that was fair to say. Because what was the story? You had a run in with, was it painters at the BBC you had a run in with? Yes, my goodness, things get around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, um, one of the problems when you're stacked, as I am, you know, and when you sort of run along a corridor. <laughs> I know your stack, but just lower down. <laughs> my, my stack I've got is all here. Over. <laughs> and, it's still the stack. It still means the same stack. Oh right. yes, it still means the same. I'm sure. And uh, I was going past these painters, and they made fun of me because my tits were wiggling, and you know, I was running along. And, um, I thought I'm not having that. I'm not having that. And you know, when you confront people. They get very nervous. Yeah. So I stopped and I went over to them and I looked at them and I took their great big hands and I put them. <laughs> I put them on my great big breast. <laughs> they were terrified. <laughs> When I was going back along the corridor, they were painting. <laughs> I didn't say a word. Greg, <laughs> oh. you are—you're uh, back on the road. You're touring as well. Yeah, I am in the autumn. Yes, yeah. it starts on the third of October in Devon, runs till the fourteenth of December in Blackpool. Now it's called the tour is called the back of my mom's head. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom. It is genuinely my mum, yeah. <laughs> Was she on The Voice? <laughs> yeah. 
didn't get it, so yeah. she didn't turn around. Turn around, turn around. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just laughed politely. That's the yeah. truth. <laughs>